Hey folks, David Stewart here, DeviousPress.com. Let's talk a little bit today about writing. Yes, how to write your book on the go, to draft your book. If you do not have what I often have, which is uh, access to a nice, quiet, secluded office where I can sit at a robust desktop computer and write my book with all of my notes open on all my multiple monitors. You got to do it on the go. You got to do it at the coffee shop or maybe at the table at school between classes or during your lunch break or one of a million other places where you have a few minutes of downtime to yourself and you want to spend those minutes being productive, just making a little bit of progress on your book. You'll find that if you can write 100 words here and there throughout the day during those little pieces of downtime, It adds up big time. You can make a lot of extra progress just kind of squeezing out little bits of work in the margins. And I'd like to give you some advice how to do that, including what kind of things you can get as far as keyboards and uh, different options for achieving on-the-go productivity. Now, of course, the most obvious solution would be, say, a laptop, right? But not everybody has the money to just buy a fully featured Windows laptop. I know some of you have a laptop as your primary computer. You may be watching this on your laptop. You may do all your work on your laptop specifically so you could work at the coffee shop. But there are even more places you can work and you don't always have the convenience of bringing around a laptop. So of course, the first and obvious solution would be, oh, you're going to write on your laptop. There might be expenses there. It's also actually a suboptimal typing experience. I type all of my books on a mechanical keyboard. I've had it for years. It's a DOS keyboard. Um, I was going to get the one that had no nothing printed on the keys, just black, so that a noob couldn't sit down and even use my computer. But uh, my wife was like, I need to be able to see what the keys say. I might use your computer, and she has used my computer. So I got one with the with all the stuff printed. But a mechanical keyboard is really helpful for typing, um, especially if you're using, say, the Cherry MX Blue switches, which are very, very clicky um, and will give you a lot of feedback as to the fact that you've actually pressed the key. So a laptop is a great solution. You could even go with a Chromebook if you want to save money, and I'll talk about some ways that you can do that. But the keyboard is always suboptimal. So I'm give, try to give you some other kinds of options for what you can do on the go that maybe you haven't thought about. So you could get a Chromebook. Chromebooks are cheaper. They run Chrome OS, which is a lot like an Android OS. A lot of the apps will work. You can run Microsoft Word, as far as I know, on it using the Android app. Uh, It's not as full featured as the actual Windows version of Word, but you can certainly draft your document with it. You could also use Google Docs. And once you uh, have it where you want it on Google Docs and you want to maybe do some formatting in Microsoft Word or or a different program, um, you can download it as a Word document and move it around to whatever program you want. Google Docs is also a great option because everything's stored in the cloud. So if you're switching devices a lot, it's already there. You don't have to worry about switching USB sticks. If you're physically saving your document all the time on your USB drive on your laptop, you want to go to your desktop, did I save it? You know, it, it can. it's just an extra thing to deal with. When it's all in the cloud, you can feel pretty secure about it being there. Um, And so, you know, you could use a Chromebook and Chromebooks can come in pretty small sizes that make it pretty convenient to carry around. But what if you actually can't carry around an extra device? All you can carry is your stuff with your pockets. Well, I'd like to show you some stuff to that effect. So let's take a look. Oh, this is not the kind of keyboard I'm talking about, but that's gonna be our background today. My my dusty old uh, MIDI controller here um, with some crumbs on it. So I might have shown this before. This is actually a keyboard. And just to give you an idea of how big it is, there is um, a Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus, I think. So a standard, you know, high quality phone. It's a little bit wider and it's definitely thicker, but this is something that most men could carry in their pockets. And certainly if you're a woman, you could probably carry it in your purse without any problems. And you could always throw this in your bag too, as a, as a man, if you don't want to carry around a laptop or you can't afford a laptop. And I think about this for $40 and this thing's pretty cool. Um, you can take it out of the case and it opens up and it's actually a full sized keyboard, uh, as you can see. So it is a full sized keyboard There are a couple of things that are not great about it. If you put it on a flat surface, because these two little areas are raised, it kind of wants to rock a little bit. And um, some of the keys are not quite as responsive as I'd want them to be, but it feels like a laptop keyboard and works uh, actually pretty well to that end. Um, Everything is laid out more or less what you want, except for the shift key is not quite in the right place. 
place, but it's totally possible to type pretty accurately on this um, and you can carry it in your pocket. I've actually done a ton of drafting just with this keyboard and this little case here, um, this is a, I think it's pluggable is the company that makes this. This case folds up with magnets into a little, uh, how does this work? Oh, like this. Um, here you go. It folds up into a little stand and you can just put your phone on it. Um, or if you're using something like a tablet, you know, like an iPad, this is an iPad mini, um, which you can see is not very big. Uh, you can just put that on there and bam, now you have like a little desktop setup on the go. It doesn't take up as much space as a laptop. It's all on the same device, which is connected to a cellular network, which means if you're writing in a Google doc or um, a Microsoft Word doc for Android and you're saving it to say your OneDrive, it's all gonna be saved to the cloud really pretty easy to do. And I've squeezed out a ton of words with this. With a modern phone, the screen is actually big enough that it's quite easy to type on it. You don't need a huge thing if you're just focusing on that one Word document for the drafting process. So um, this works great. And I think I bought it for like 40 or $45. Um, great little product. It automatically turns on when you open it, turns off when you close it, and folds up in its own nice little case. So there's a great solution there if you don't wanna to have to carry around a laptop. Let's talk about some more solutions, shall we? So that's one, we'll put that one over here. Now, if you want no compromises, if you want no compromises, here you go guys. This is a full-sized mechanical keyboard. It's a Bluetooth keyboard. It can also operate with USB-C. I think I got it for 50 bucks. And if you think about it, now this thing's kind of bulky, right? Man, I don't want to carry around a bulky, lap, bulky thing, but if you're carrying a laptop bag, this isn't really that bulky. It's a little heavy, but it feels really robust. So if you want a um, if you want a typing experience that is very very approximately close to your um, to your computer, you can get something like this. I got this one. This is Royal Kludge, I think, and it has amber keys. I like the amber keys. It reminds me of the old DOS machines from the 80s uh, that I liked. Very accurate to type. It feels a little bit different from my DOS keyboard because my DOS keyboard is all greasy and worn in by my usage for like eight years of it, um, writing probably 12 books on it. And so this one um, is fairly new and, and uh, can just connect via Bluetooth to your phone um, or to a Android tablet or your iPad or whatever you want, or you could bring it in addition to your laptop. So uh, instead of, if you, let's say you have a Microsoft Surface Pro, which I don't have, it has a little keyboard case, but the keyboard is simply awful, it sucks. So instead of carrying that, you put the Surface Pro in there with that little stand and you put that in there. A little bit extra weight, but uh, boy, the typing experience is so much more accurate. Now, I always recommend a mechanical keyboard for those of you who are actually going to want to type words into a document. A mechanical keyboard is what you what you need. It gives you much more positive feedback to your key presses. Um, and it uh, it's a little clicky, so you get an auditory feedback, but the main thing is you feel them. And I use blue switches, Cherry MX blue switches. These are actually a knockoff, but they feel like blue switches. I have the real thing on my main keyboard, and this feels good. Now, what's cool about this one, too, is that because it has like a USB-C plug and Charges. You could plug this into your desktop at home. And you're like, oh, I'm going away for the weekend. Just take your computer. Just take your take your keyboard with you, and um, then you have the ultimate typing experience in a hotel room or somewhere like that. You still have that great feeling here. And you could even play Morrowind with like a if you got like a wireless mouse or a Bluetooth mouse. You can even play Morrowind on your phone with this. Uh, how cool is that? So this is great. Now I do want to show another one I bought. I bought this one first. This one's going back. Um, this one is by, I don't remember, Dyra or something. It's basically the same thing. But here's why uh, I really recommend you look closely at the keyboard you're buying before you buy it because um, you can avoid my problems. Now this one's great. It has all kinds of fruity colors. It has these rubber keys which feel kind of nice. Um, the font's weird, but I never look at the keyboard anyway, and therein lies the problem. Because over here, look at this keyboard layout. You have <laughs> you have your period, then your shift key, then an arrow key, then the question mark and slash key. This keyboard layout is unusable to me. I have to return this keyboard and send it back to Amazon because I just can't use it. Um, I can't do what I want to do with it because if I'm touch typing by hand and I ask, a, I'm writing dialogue for a living that question mark over there, this could cause a psychotic break in me if I'm having to constantly look at my, rewrite my sentences because I can't touch 
the question mark. I'm always touching the shift key instead of a question mark. But it's it's a nice keyboard otherwise. But before you buy it, look really close to the way they specifically arrange these keys for these single size keyboards. Uh, because they sometimes make little, just like on that first one I showed, they make little substitutions which can make a big difference and make it way harder or more annoying to use a keyboard. The Royal Kludge, just by comparison, has a perfectly normal keyboard layout. It's exactly the same as a real regular keyboard, so no problems there. You could use this on your desktop, you could use it on your laptop, you could use it on the go. You could bring it with your laptop, bring it with your Microsoft Surface. So I don't recommend this one by, what is this, by Diera or Dyra, I don't know. Um, so I don't really recommend this one, even though it's got some fun fruity keys, uh, as you can see. Uh, so that one's gotta go back. So make sure you pay attention to the keyboard layout. But otherwise, you know, this is a pretty good keyboard. It's got little feet that pop up. Um, it's pretty robust. I'd say this one feels really robust, like it's a tank. I can really probably carry this one around. Now I got this one because I wanted to be able to type in a different room while I'm messing with kids or like while my kids are doing stuff. Um, so I set up a, a totally different weird, weird setup that no one would normally do. You guys ready for this? So rather than buying like a, an iPad, you know, buying an iPad, you could do this with an iPad. Not, there's Word apps for iPad. You could use MS Word for, or Google Docs for your iPad and connect a keyboard to it. Rather than doing that, uh, I decided to do something completely weird and I got a, I got a portable monitor. This portable monitor is actually pretty cool here. And um, so, you know, it comes with a little stand that folds up and uh, you can power it via USB-C and just plug the phone into it and it operates, it turns on Samsung DeX, which basically gives me a desktop experience on my phone. That way I can be working on my phone and then, oh, you know, I have some time to type, plug this into the monitor and uh, boom, I'm good to go. I don't have to do any extra stuff to get straight back into my work. And oh, you know, the, the baby woke up or, or something else happened. No big deal, okay, no big deal. I can just go back to using, um, I can just go back to using my phone to do whatever else I was gonna do or pick it up later. So it creates a, a lot of seamless work for me is to use this portable monitor. Plus I could use it as a third monitor at home here, use it as a second monitor for a laptop. Um, so this is an option, and if you have like a Samsung phone or there's other desktop environments that you can get for Android, plug your phone into it, works great. This one doesn't have a battery, but you can oddly enough power it with a battery. So you end up with this really weird situation where you are you have a battery pack powering the monitor, the monitor is charging the phone through USB-C, and then you have a full-size mechanical keyboard sitting at a table. This was This is like a very weird solution to the mobile thing um, rather than buying a new laptop. But it has some benefits in that, you know, you, you tend to buy a new phone fairly often. So your my phone is actually stronger than my old laptop and more powerful. It's always connected to the network. So I'm always sure that my documents are being saved in the cloud. And like I said, I can move from working on my phone, you know, holding it to going to desktop mode to going back all while having a, a really good experience with the keyboard and not having to deal with stuff with the laptop, opening up a Windows laptop, waiting for it to boot up. There's actually a huge amount of downtime saved if you're using your phone to draft with some of these solutions, either a little fold-up keyboard or something like this that will just connect and let you draft a document really, really fast. Um, I actually think it's a solution that a lot of people haven't thought very much about but it's one that I think is actually um, actually pretty cool. So I'll show this to you. Like, let's open up a document and, um, you know, we'll open up my food diary, why not? So you guys can see what I've been eating lately. And uh, to plug this guy in here, which will give him some power. And then you can just plug your phone directly into here. And Samsung DeX, bam! Now I have a desktop environment. I can even uh, scroll this down, and uh, you can go use your phone as a touchpad if you don't want to use a mouse. And here we go. We can actually scroll around and open up a Word document. Um, you know, we can open up this new one. 
This is a book that hasn't come out yet, guys. And I can get to drafting on this book. Let's go all the way down to the bottom. Scroll, 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 scroll. Just using my phone as a, as a touchpad. And I can come in here. Boop, boop, boop. And hello, world. Caps lock is on. There we go. And then we can get to work on the uh, to work on the on the document, however we want to. Okay, so pretty cool how how that can work. And then I have a, actually a much more robust and better feeling environment. Oh, and I have something I gotta go. And bye bye. And I can just leave that sitting at the table and go do whatever I need to with my kids. So those are some solutions that are alternatives to laptops, and of course use a better keyboard. A great keyboard will enhance your ability to type your novel in ways that you probably are not thinking, are, are not cognizant of, you're not, you're not aware of it yet. So thanks so much guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. You can visit my site dbspress.com for more articles and fun things like that. I usually, if you want more of my political crap, it's usually on, on my blog. And so anyways, thanks guys. And I'll see you next time.